Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com and <laughs> uh, I've been telling my life stories on my videos and uh, so this is going to be a couple more stories from my life and uh, the previous video showed how I came back to college for my second year uh, after spending the summer in California working to save money and of course uh, if you watch those videos you find out I got in trouble with my folks and they said I'm on my own I'll have to pay my own way to college because they'd been paying my way and so uh, <laughs> so it turns out I'm back at college and I got some jobs and made it possible for me to survive in the year so uh, let's see what happened this year my second year lots of things happened but one of the uh, interesting things happened was uh, my first year I took piano 101 and piano 102 and then summer came along and so then at the beginning of my second year um, I took I don't know if it was called 103 or advanced piano or whatever it was called but uh, anyway I had a, a my class was in a room with a professor at his, his it was his office he had a grand piano in his office and uh, it was fun to know I was going to be able to play at a at a grand piano and he did an excellent job of teaching music uh, I I had already learned about the scales and uh, different keys and how to read music and play and stuff <clears throat> and so he took me on from there well uh, he even had me write scores back then the uh, the uh, movie that was popular was the Exodus and the theme from Exodus was a was a song that was uh, real popular back then and so uh, uh, he he wanted me to write us write up a score so I wrote the score for the theme from Exodus and, uh, <laughs> and he he looked at it and then of course it was I wrote, I played everything in the key of C, so when I uh, made the score, uh, wrote the score, well then of course it had to be in a minor key because that was the music uh, that that song was written to, or so, yeah. So anyway, uh, so I learned something from that, and then uh, he just taught me a whole bunch of stuff. And then for my final test, he wanted to uh, have me learn, memorize two songs, and... Uh, so I did that, and uh, I, I memorized the two songs, and so then for my final test, then uh, I came to his office, and he had this, this uh, and th remember now, I had changed minors my, after my first quarter. I started as a PE minor, and then I switched second quarter of the previous year. I switched to a music minor and so now I'm in the music uh, <laughs> in learning music and so uh, he had this lady that was well dressed an older lady and uh, she was a board member for the college and he wanted her to come hear me play I think he was pretty proud of me because I, I, I don't I'm not gonna brag but I guess I was doing okay music was built into me I think so anyway so I, uh, she was sitting there, and so I played the first song, and she clapped, and uh, uh, she liked it really well. And so then I played the second song, and she clapped, and uh, I don't know if she made any crazy sounds. After all, she's a, a board member of the college. But uh, so then uh, the instructor said, that's not too bad for an industrial arts major. Now remember, I was an industrial arts major, which meant I was becoming a shop teacher, okay? That's what they teach you. They teach you how to be a shop teacher. And so, uh, looks like they got the road blocked down here, so I think we'll just turn around and go a different... Well, maybe we don't need to. Maybe we can just go this way. So anyway... The... Uh, the instructor said, that's not too bad for a industrial arts teacher. And she said, uh, or industrial arts major, he said. 
And she said, he's not a music major? And the instructor said, no. And she said, this college doesn't have a minor in music. <laughs> so if you were watching my videos way, way back, I mentioned that I just decided I'd change minors. <clears throat> and so I couldn't be a... Uh, I couldn't be a music minor. I had to be a music major or find another minor. So uh, that ended my music lessons because I wasn't going to change from being an uh, uh, industrial arts teacher because I really liked that. that. That was enjoyable. And it turns out I turned out I, was, uh, I had a lot of fun teaching that. So bottom line, <laughs> after, I, after I found out I couldn't be a music minor, I switched and became a an art minor. Now art was easy for me. If you recall, I'll put the picture back up. This is a picture I sketched of my uh, my little sun sunroom apartment <laughs> that I had and paid $18 a month for it. And so uh, uh, that would that you know I just did that on a Saturday morning, stood on the bed with a ballpoint pen and sketched out the picture of where I was living. Sent it to my parents so they could see what it looked like. So anyway, uh, I changed to, a, to an art minor. And then another thing that happened along the way, uh, I had been paying $18 a month <clears throat> to live, <clears throat> pardon me, I had been paying $18 a month to live in that little uh, sunroom. And so, but, uh, my friend Henry, uh, I just kind of got tired of being around him, you know, and I wanted to find me, find, excuse me, find me another place. So I started looking and I found this place uh, that was run by an old lady and her husband. And the, the, the upstairs was rented out or was, they set it up to rent it out to, uh, to people. And so it was available. But I think it was like, I don't know, $25 a month or something like that. And so I took it and it had, it had, uh, it was like a, a hallway on the left side of the, uh, on, well, I don't know, anyway, it, the left side of the, of the upstairs. And then there was another apartment on the right side of the, of the house, but uh, it wasn't, they didn't use it for an apartment. So that was storage or something. So it was a pretty nice apartment. Uh, it, I ha actually had a kitchen, had a, a table and chairs, uh, lots of plug-ins and stuff. So that, like, what I did was I, in order to make coffee, I put some instant coffee into a cup of water, and then I stirred it around, and I had one of those little uh, coils that you plug in and you stick it into your, into your cup. And uh, maybe I get a picture of that if I can remember. Anyway, so <clears throat> that's how I made my hot coffee, and so that was a lot nicer than living in that that upstairs uh, or that second floor uh, sunroom, and and also there was only room for one guy, and so now I was on my own, and Henry, uh, I don't remember what happened, but anyway, so we didn't we didn't room together or or live in the same place after that, which was good. All right, so anyway, if you remember. From the last video, I got a job um, working in the in the dish room at the cafeteria, and <clears throat> <clears throat> pardon me, I'm sorry. And I got I finally worked it around so that I had <clears throat> um, had uh, uh, work when I worked in the dish room. All I did was take the hot dishes out of the washing machine and stack them, and and so that was. That was a nice job. And then, of course, I found out that if I worked at breakfast, it wasn't as much work because there's not, not many people come to breakfast. So, morning. So, uh, that was a pretty good job. Anyway, when I would come up in the wintertime, when I would come up uh, on my motorcycle from I lived about, oh, six, eight blocks away, uh, and it was cold, and I'd park my motorcycle in the loading dock of the cafeteria. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you know all this. So anyway, I uh, uh, and then I'd go in, and because it was so cold, 
I would stand by one of the stoves and uh, get warmed up. And then there was, well, I don't know, uh, three or four cooks, and they were all like grandma age for me. And so I got to know them, and I teased them, and they, and I even helped them with washing pots and pans once in a while, things like that. And so uh, they got to like me really well. I'd come in every morning, stand by the stove, get warmed up, and then uh, so, so um, uh, that was kind of like my hangout. And then also, uh, as time went by, working in the in the I should just wait and tell this part of the story. But eventually, uh, the food service wanted to promote me to do other things. Uh, but I was returned. I mean, they even had me cooking breakfast one time uh, for a while. But uh, another story. Anyway, so uh, it came time at the end of spring vacation. Uh, the last meal that they served uh, that day was uh, they served uh, sloppy joe hamburgers. And so they, uh, at when everybody was gone and uh, and I was ready to go and every I, I didn't go home. I worked. Oh, by the way, between quarters, I would stay at school, and I would work, make money uh, for the janitor and things like that. And so uh, it was going to be about a two-week break or two-week period between the end of spring quarter and the beginning of summer quarter, which means that the cafeteria would be closed. So the cooks took pity on me, and they and, and the, as I came through the kitchen or whatever on that very last day, they gave me this large shopping bag that was full of Sloppy Joe hamburgers that were wrapped in foil. And they said, take these home and eat them while, you know, as your uh, as the days go by uh, during the break and so I took them home now remember I had this new apartment where I had a kitchen and everything and so I set them on the kitchen counter uh, and uh, and then every once in a while like during the day and so forth I would grab one and uh, take the take the foil off and sit down at the table and uh, eat it and uh, so I did that Oh, I don't know, three or four, five days. I just kept eating away on them. And then <clears throat> one day, uh, I took one out of the bag, sat down at the kitchen table, pulled the, uh, pulled the uh, foil off of the, of the hamburger. Only thing is the foil got stuck to the top half of the, of the uh, hamburger. So when I pull when I pull the foil off, then I could see that the meat in the sloppy Joe was covered with maggots. <laughs> I was kind of a dumb kid back then, and I didn't know that when they gave me those, nobody told me to put it in the refrigerator. <laughs> they thought I was smart enough not to do that. So as it turns out, I got to eat four or five of them, and then had to throw the rest away and so um, it was nice of them but I just wasn't smart enough for what they did for me so anyway uh, uh, that I kind of hung out there and uh, that was my hangout was the cafeteria because they were getting to know me pretty well there and uh, so that was the beginning of, of my second year changed minors from music to art and uh, got uh, became family with the grandma cooks in the cafeteria. And also, uh, I met a, a really nice girl. Let's see, I have time to tell you about that. Uh, she, she worked in the cafeteria, um, but she was also a student. And she was a, a blonde, and she was from Holland. And she had, uh, she was born in Holland, and her parents and her were put into a concentration camp during the Second World War. Uh, the Germans took them and put them in a concentration camp. They, I guess probably because they were Jewish. So anyway, they, uh, she, 
she got the name Coos, C-O-S, uh, while she was just a little tiny child in that concentration camp. And then she grew up, and then, of course, they were liberated and came to the United States. And so she was, uh, so I met her, and she was super, super nice. We became really good friends. Uh, I took her on some motorcycle rides. One of the motorcycle rides was about a, a 40 mile ride uh, south of Bellingham to meet her parents. And so we spent the day visiting with her parents and uh, they didn't talk, they didn't speak really good English, but anyway, we had fun doing that. And then we spent time just doing a lot of stuff together. And so, uh, <laughs> and she was strong. Uh, she told me stories of some of the guys that she'd met that tried to take advantage of her and she really whomped on them. So uh, anyway, but we became good friends and we were good friends for a long time until uh, I think one of the breaks came along <clears throat> and everybody separated and then uh, we didn't see each other again. But uh, so that was that was one of my quote unquote girlfriends in college. So anyway, that's uh, that's the first year back. And I got more more stories to tell <clears throat> about the following years, but I won't take you through a year at a time, I promise you. I just wanted to fill you in on what happened uh, throughout that first first quarter of the year. And uh, so anyway, I want to thank you for watching my videos and God bless.